Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. So today's video is going to be for new players to the division game and why I'm making new player guides is really interesting. There are two reasons. One of my comment, uh, you know, commentators or audience members said that there are a lot of new players coming to the game and would benefit from a lot of the new helpful basic content. And when he said it, it seemed like I started to notice a pattern of people asking questions that, you know, kind of showed that they were really new to the game. You know, I never necessarily thought about it. So thank you very much, Guard3, for pointing that out, because apparently it seems like people are coming into the community fresh and don't really understand what a build is about. And then another side is that people who are coming back to the game who want to know how to approach the game having been gone a long time. Now, that might be a separate video for you guys, but if you watch this video, maybe that might reveal something as to exactly, you know, what you, you know, it might provide some insight for you. So for new players or newish players, what is a build? A build is basically a combination of stats to allow for your player to play a specific role or player archetype within the game. Now, whatever the heck that means, <laughs> there are different roles and different player archetypes within Tom Clancy's The Division 2. A player role or player archetype will follow the combination of stats to make that player go one direction in their gameplay style. So if you want to be a damage dealer, you will have to play and build in a specific player archetype. If you want to be a healer, you have to do the same. And if you also want to be a support player, whatever that means, you also have to build that way using stats that will provide support to your team. Now, when I say damage dealer, the primary way we deal damage is using weapons. But we also do damage in the division using skills. There are all kinds of skills. There are some that do damage and some that do not do damage. So when you say you're a DPS player, that could mean two different things. In Tom Clancy's The Division 2, even Division 1, that was also a thing. There's also the side of support where we, you know, we're either doing crowd control. When we say crowd control or CC, we're talking about fending off enemy NPCs, pushing them back, boxing them in, playing different strategic ways to allow for maybe your damage dealers to be able to mow them down or, you know, all that kind of stuff. So a support player probably playing the shield, probably playing some kind of a drone or firefly, playing maybe a cam launcher, uh, you know, modification or, you know, all kinds of different fun stuff, maybe using the decoy or maybe using the shock trap and, you know, even maybe using the pulse to provide a team buff to their damage. These are the aspects that you can go into when it comes to the skills or the support as well. Now, what stats do you need to build will determine what play style you want to play. So let's go into the recalibration library, which actually does have a series of stats within the game. So first of all, your weapons have specific stats on them. That's the first thing you got to know, weapon stats. The second thing is you also have stats on your gear or your brand. Okay, there are stats that range from different things. There are brand stats like this. Let me show you something. Let me show you a brand, what a brand is and what a gear set is. Wyvern wears a brand, okay? It's a brand set. If you wear one piece of Wyvern, it will give you one of its stats. If you wear two, it will give you two of these stats and three. So if I wear two pieces of Wyvern, so a pair of gloves and maybe a pair of uh, maybe a holster, I'll have an I'll get 10% status effect. If I maybe add a pair of Wyvern knee pads, I'll have 20% skill duration. This is a brand. This is a gear set. This is the CQB gloves for ongoing directive. It does have attributes, but it also has its own gear set stats, which if you rock the two piece, three piece or four piece will give you specific stats that build on one another to complement that play style. Now let's look at the example of this. If I wear two pieces of this, I will now have 15% status effect. And if I put three pieces, I'll have 20% reload speed. So the way I reload my weapons, will be better. And then if I put on the four pieces, I'll have rules of engagement, which gives me extra damage and all that. Now, also on brands, we have talents, which ec also are extra stats that are specific to backpacks and chess pieces. So this is a gear set backpack talent. It's specific. It's limited to only that, ta that talent that you can roll on the gear set backpack itself. I can, this is short, uh, short circuit. I can roll, that's that's all the talents that come on the backpacks for hardwire gear set. I cannot roll it on 
True Patriot backpacks. True Patriot backpacks have theirs. Patriotic boost. I can't roll it on ongoing directive. It has its own emergency requisition and all of that. But on Wyvern and the others, like Richter Kaiser, um, Hillegard, and the others, these sets of talents can roll on any of them. When I mean roll, they can come with them when they drop from a boss, or you can recalibrate them to be on there. So those are the stats that also go with it in brand sets and gear sets. Now, weapon stats also come to the fact that they have attributes they have their core stats which is you know the amount of damage they'll do based on the amount of other things that you have going they have their rpm and their max size they also have a base damage that you can trigger somewhere i never bothered to learn how to trigger the base damage of my weapons no forgive me but based on what you have on your gear you'll be able to see what damage you have regarding your stats so let's look at stats and let's talk about build archetypes. So say you want to build mm, a damage build. This is the easier one to go with. And you want to, so you pick your weapon. What weapon class do you like playing? Uh, SMG, well, let's just go assault rifles. That Because if I go SMGs, we'll have to talk about crits and all that stuff. And I'm not ready for that. It's almost midnight. <laughs> so I'm going for the, a and I say, okay, I want to play the ACR. Okay, so I pick up an ACR. The ACR is a regular ACR. It's not a named uh, version of the ACR, which I don't know if we have a named version, but it's not a named weapon. It's just a regular weapon. So I look at its stats. It has, you know, based on my build, it's got 64,000 damage, 650 RPM, 50 on a mag. But my attributes now have to kind of align with it. So first of all, look at my core attributes. Assault rifle damage, I get an extra 10%. I can get 15% max. I get extra 16.5% health damage. I can get a 21% max. And then I think I can get to 10% critical hit damage. Critical hit damage and critical hit chance, RPG terminology, that's probably another video. I do have a video on it, but if you want to look around, you can see explanations of those. And then your weapon has a talent that will either, you know, complement your build or your skills or whatever. This talent is called Spike. It says if you hit a headshot, it will give 20% skill damage for eight seconds. You know, and so if you were building a skill build, you would want to have a weapon like this to be able to hit a headshot to an enemy and increase your skill damage. So example, case in, you know, case in point, the build that you see me with right now has an artillery turret, which is dealing amounts of damage. So what I tried to do is hit headshots with this spike so that my damage here will be increased by an extra 20%. This is how a build works. You are combining stats from different places, weapon, gear, brand, and maybe even skill to build your play style. This is basically the reasoning behind building. But I was talking <laughs> about building a damage build. I, I went off track. I'm sorry. And so you look at your weapon, you look at what it has. Well, I said I wanted to build a damage build, right? Well, so this talent does not work for me. So I go find another weapon that might, you know, complement what I want to build. Now, let me look, let me show you guys one of my already pre-built damage loadouts so that it makes things quite, you know, quite easy for us to walk through this. Um, Where's that? Where's my ongoing directive? I have an ongoing directive one here. E, it should be here. Oh, let's just use my negotiator's dilemma. This might work because it's an assault rifle based build. Okay. Uh, this is based on crit chance and all that. I guess it will be a wonderful opportunity to do it. So I start out with, you know, my weapons or whatever it is I want to go with. I'm using the Eagle Bear, which provides me these core attributes, these stats, and provides me my core attributes and my regular attributes. And I like these numbers so far. I can try to get the max roll for 21% health damage, but then I also want to use the Eagle Strike. The Eagle Strike provides me what I need, provides me the tenacity, uh, talent, and the Eagle Strike talents, which are very good to complement the build. You can read them to kind of make sense of them. If you want to use a non-exotic weapon, you can just use a regular exotic, exotic weapon with a talent on them. Let's say I'm using the military MK, uh, AKM, and it has Killer. Killer says, killing an enemy with critical hits grants me 40% critical hit damage for 10 seconds. So what that means is I want to be able to take on my enemy NPCs fast and all that. So I need to gain damage on my build. So... I come to my stats and you're going to see what we call all reds, right? My core attribute is a red attribute, which gives me more weapon damage. Like I said, I want to play a damage build based on weapons. So 15% damage on my mask. I go to my uh, backpack. If you notice, it's also got weapon damage. I need to make this 15% or find one that can give me 15%. So I'll take it. My chest piece 
also has almost natural, 15, you know, weapon damage. I can go roll it to 15% weapon damage. My gloves have weapon damage for my main or core attribute. My holster, 12% weapon damage. I, I need to try to get myself another one with 15% weapon damage. And then my knee pads also has weapon damage. These are my core attributes that I'm going to roll on the gear set pieces and even on the brand set pieces. Now notice too that attributes are different. Gear sets have only two attributes that you can add to them. Brands have three. This is not something I would worry about too much, but let's go to the basis. Now, because you want to build a, uh, you know, a damage based build, I've already rolled my core attributes to all be based on damage. So this is an all red or all damage build that's going to be used using my weapons and all that stuff as well. Then you go back and look at another thing to help you make your build work, because like I said, a build is you taking stats and actually putting them together to improve your play style. And so I'm rolling critical hit chance and critical hit damage on my minor attributes, which is what they call attributes here. And if you notice, there's a theme, crit chance, crit damage. I come here. This is the only one that doesn't have crit chance or crit damage because it's the best that I could get in the, you know, in a prevailing time as well. This, I don't have crit chance and crit damage, but it will be preferable that I have that on my knee pads, but I just don't have it. I prefer to take critical hit damage on those knee pads. On my whole store, I was able to find, you know, critical hit damage and all that. Now you ask, why did you roll critical hit damage as your minor attribute? Now I don't have it here because that's what the RNG, you know, that's what it dropped for you. Well, it's because of the nature of this gear set. Remember, I told you there are stats on brands and gear sets, and I want to honor all the stats that I'm getting from this gear set. So I'm complementing it using my build. If I put two pieces of Negotiator's Dilemma on, I get 15% critical hit chance. If I put three pieces on, I get 20% critical hit damage. It's given to me. So any other critical hit damage that I get on my other minor rolls are just an added bonus to this 20% critical hit damage that I'm getting. And then I use my Negotiator's Dilemma, which allows for me to mark hostiles and then deal critical hit damage to them. And then whenever a hostile is marked, they stay marked for 20 seconds. And when I'm dealing damage to other hostiles, the marked hostiles are going to be taking damage as well. I know it sounds crazy. It sounds like a, it sounds like a fairy tale as you know, and all. And so this is how a build works. You're going to be stacking stats in order for you to be able to make your build complement one another. And so if I hit an enemy NPC with a critical hit, it's supposed to mark them. So I mark those two. But once I start hitting these other guy, the other third marked guy, the others are supposed to be taking damage. So if I start hitting, let's say I mark these three guys, right? Let me just use this. Let me use my this uh, my LMG. As I'm hitting him, the others, you see the others are taking damage. So this build is telling me to prioritize critical hit damage and critical hit chance. So that, let me see if I can mark this fool here. And then as I let me then shoot this fool. You notice this guy is going to be down soon. Watch. He's done. I didn't shoot him. So this is the beauty of Negotiator's Dilemma. And this is the beauty of using the gear set. Now you can use brands to also create a very good damage build as well. But it will also be something that has to complement your weapon. So complementary facts come from weapon, brands, and stats. Now there's one more layer of builds that I want to show you guys, uh, you know, skills as well, too. Don't, don't get me wrong. I could add pulse to that, which would give me more critical hit as you know, more crit hits uh, as well, which is also a skill. But, you know, like I said, this is a process. The final layer, I think in my video anyways, I might have missed something. So comment section help out. I mean, I'm trying my best because I need to go to bed and all is your specialization. Your specialization is somewhere where you have to come in here, sit down and read and consider what would be preferable for you. I'm running an assault rifle build, so I have to make sure that I actually unlock the extra 15% assault rifle damage that this, you know, specialization grants me. This is the survivalist specialization. So I come in here and I actually unlock it, you know, being, you know, adding my specialization points to them. You can get specialization points by reaching max XP for each level, and it will give you specialization points for the specialization that you have equipped. Right now, I have my survivalist specialization here, and it's my favorite specialization. I like running it uh, for specific reasons, I've said many times. And this is why, you know, you, you know, builds are very complex in a sense in this game. Be many of us say it's not really complex, but don't mind us. We've played the game for, <laughs> we've played the game for over a year. So after a year of learning, I mean, it will be really interesting to not understand exactly what goes on with it. 
Now, if you look at an entire skill tree, there are aspects of your skill tree and your specialization that work for group play, that work for you as an individual, that works for your weapon, and then works for, for your weapon class, and then works for your specialization weapon. Now, because weapon damage is influenced by your weapon damage stats, it also means that your specialization weapon is also going to be getting buffs as you're adding weapon damage. So think about that as something that's affecting. It says it's a signature weapon, so it will be influenced by your signature, you know, damage. So look at this. 3,000, 3, sorry, 3,000, I'm sorry, 3,800,000 damage. When I change to maybe something that removes 15% of that, we should see a decrease uh, of, um, of the stats. Now, 15% did not seem to, you know, because the 0.8 million is not significant enough to drop it but let's change it a little bit more and see if it's going to really how much it affects it when we look at the numbers 3.8 million okay it's not really affecting it that 15 that extra 30 percent doesn't seem to be making too much of a difference and then let's go back and look at it 3.7 million do you see it start to go down because now we have now removed 45 percent of that damage and so it's starting to show up that we don't have as much weapon damage as we can. Now, another thing that you have to be suspicious. Yeah. And so that's basically what you have to pay. There are things like that you have to pay attention to as well. And so all of this put together is how you build. You don't necessarily have to watch a build video in order for you to make a build. Now. I'm saying this, but I'll be the first to tell you that I watch build videos from some of my friends that are YouTubers and literally copy their builds and run around and have fun with it like a kid in a playground. What I'm saying is when you see builds and you already have a play style, you will be able to recognize that that build either fits your play style or doesn't fit your play style. Does that make sense? So that way you're not frustrated copying somebody else's build and not knowing what reference a build is supposed to be. So usually I'm a tank. I love running tanks in this game. It's crazy. I got big tank, the tank, CC tank. Like I got, you know, it's weird. I just run all kinds of fun tank combinations. And when I make my tank build videos and talk about them, a lot of the community do does not care for tank builds at all in this game. But at the same time, it doesn't matter because I know how to build as a tank. Tanks are more complex to build in a sense because you can build them, you know, in different paradigms using different stats. I, that's why I didn't talk about it. So I would refer you to watch my video on how to make a tank build. Uh, I made one version of that. You can actually make it in two different versions. And this helps me to understand, okay, how exactly my play style is and what I want. So this is what a build is in Tom Clancy's The Division on the most basic level. There is so much more that goes into a build that I've not been able to cover in this video. And I ex and I know that that's why this video, I was so hesitant to make it because I know it can be very, very complex. Um, there's also the part about your shade watch that you can also gain. Many of you are looking at my shade level watch like what? I really don't care about shade levels. I made a video about that, but I just I refuse to post it. I don't know why, but maybe I'll just leave it here so you guys can see it in the link below. And these also add extra stats to your game, to your, uh, you know, to your agent as a whole. So your agent has more power as your agent continues to go along. So I hope this was helpful. Give me, let me hear your thoughts in the comment section. I appreciate you guys for watching the video. Veterans, you know, I'm relying on you to basically help with some of the questions that may arise with a video like this. A lot of people are, you know, probably, you know, maybe new, maybe coming back or something. So this might help them to be able to kind of pick up where, you know, they probably have learned up to and are trying to make, a, you know, a little bit of headway. All right. Talk to you all soon. Hopefully. Peace.